I'm going to be saying a bunch of words that I don't like. Anyway, the title is spot on. There are studies that look at a particular drink and the impact that drink has on removing toxic pollutants out of your body. There you go. A few of the words that I don't like. So we'll go over the science, we'll go over the drink, and we'll go over why some people might seem genetically screwed, yet this drink may overcome their genetic faults. Let's get into it. I've always disliked using words like toxic and detox and pollutants because they're incredibly generic and get thrown around entirely too much, especially the word cleanse and detox. But in this instance, there is some merit because if anything is going to be called a detox from your body, it's going to be the molecules like heavy metals and organic irritants like different benzenes and aldehydes. You see, when you breathe, especially in a big city or an industrial area, microparticles get sucked down your lungs and along with those particles are these irritants and poisons, the metals and the like that we just mentioned. These uh, particles are linked to increased risk of cancer and a host of other health issues. And some of these particles can end up in other areas of your body and even accumulate over time. So. Clearly, it seems reasonable to want to find a solution. Fortunately, our body is equipped with a solution. It's called glutathione. This potent protein or tripeptide can bind pollutants, that word again, with the help of an enzyme, glutathione S-transferase or GST. Then this compound, including the toxic pollutant, will be acted on by a series of enzymes that ultimately metabolize it to mercapturic acid, this um, mercapturic acid can then be excreted in your urine. And there's ways of increasing this removal of these pollutants. In one study, participants were randomly assigned to consume a detox drink or a placebo drink that looked and tasted identically. Then the participants consumed these drinks over 12 weeks and the researchers measured the urine excretion of some of these pollutants that we discussed, like benzenes. In fact, here are the three pollutants that they tracked. These are the measures at baseline, so before consuming either drink. The main point of this table is to show that there was no differences in excretion levels between the groups initially. Confirmed statistically on the right is none of the values be fall below 0.05. Okay, so what happened over the next many weeks of consuming this detox drink? Well, look for yourself. We're looking at benzene, that cancer-promoting pollutant. And on the vertical axis is the amount of excretion while the horizontal is is the days past. So the green squares are the detox drink and we're comparing against the placebo. Clearly, there's a big difference. In fact, the detox drink was able to increase benzene removal by a whopping 60%. Well, what about irritants? Looking at those data, we see mixed results. Clearly, acroline is also increased in its excretion by about 20%. However, if your eyes go down a bit, You'll note that the croton crotonaldehyde, crotonaldehyde, ooh, that's a tough one, does not change, indicating the detox drink is effective, but selectively so. So, what's in this drink? It's broccoli sprouts. More specifically, as mentioned in this study, it's likely the molecules glucoraphanin and its product molecule sulfurophane, the active compound is the second of the two, so sulfurophane. So why do they work? And why do some people experience better effects than others? Before that, there's a specific formulation of the drink that's often used, and there's even a way to supercharge its effects by adding an ingredient to it. If you're interested in a guide on how to make it, I created one based on multiple studies that's available for the Physionic Insiders, along with the extended version of this video. If you aren't a member, Now's your chance. Let's not forget all the other perks that come with an insider membership from live sessions, monthly private podcasts, access to all other guides and protocols, research reviews, and more. It'll help you detox from the misinformation out there. The link to join is in the description. Now, how does sulfurophane work? Well, it works through a number of ways. One, it can activate a potent protein in your cells called NRF2. This protein, known as a transcription factor, can enter your cell's nucleus. There, it'll bind to different antioxidant response elements that upregulate or increase the reading of genes that are responsible for 
the production of good old glutathione. Beyond that, a second mechanism is tied to the enzyme that we briefly discussed, the GST enzyme that attaches these uh, pollutants to the glutathione. Sulfurophane increases the activity of these enzymes. This, in combination, leads to greater mercapturic acid production and the elimination of these toxins. But, speaking to those enzymes, there's something else remarkable about this drink. I mentioned at the beginning of our time together... By the way, are you comfortable? Do you need a drink or anything? Is it, like, too hot in here? Yeah, sure, I, yeah, I can turn the AC up. Just give me a second. So, back to it. Like I mentioned, there's these enzymes that conjugate or add these pollutants to glutathione to begin their ultimate excretion in urine. However, some people don't have these enzymes, at least not functional versions. That's right. Some people are genetically screwed in that they don't excrete much of these pollutants, even when they're exposed to high levels. They're called GST null individuals. <laughs> I don't know why they just like made me laugh, but they did. Uh, but I did mention that this detox, so sulfurophane drink, might be able to overcome this major issue. If we look at the data, <laughs> you'll note the amount of excreted benzene on the vertical axis. The further up it goes, the better. Again, the horizontal axis is the time passed. And there's four groups. And it so turns out that the empty circle and the empty squares indicate people who are deficient in this gene and therefore can't produce a functional GSTT1 enzyme, which means that they excrete much less of these pollutants than people who have the enzyme. However, the green conditions are the ones given the broccoli sprout drink. And see what happens? They not only normalize their benzene excretion, but surpass people who have the enzyme and don't drink the detox drink. How incredible is that? Still, two things to say here before we finish things off. One, notice how these people still excrete some of these pollutants. How is that possible if they don't have the enzyme? It's possible because there are other versions called isoforms of the enzyme. So while they don't have all the versions, they have other versions. And the green drink of life, as I shall hence call it, can stimulate these enzymes as well, as described previously with the general GST enzyme. Two, the people with the primary enzyme still have an advantage. So in any scenario, drinking the green drink of life shall benefit all immensely, although there are still advantages to not being genetically mutilated. And you still hold a special place in my heart. In the end, daily drinking a sulfurophane-filled drink with will enhance your elimination of carcinogenic and other health-harming molecules, even if your genetics may be battling against you through a lack of this GSTT1 enzyme. Now, as for another detox, pollutant-free video going over ways to improve your wasteland of a body, you may want to consider this upcoming video right here. I'll see you over there.